Hey Raptors, Mr. Lassiter with you and uh, in these two short videos I'm going to try to go over our point of view analysis and uh, the additional document for your document based question. Uh, we're going to be looking at a couple prompts that aren't what we were doing yesterday um, so stick with me through those and make sure you go through and, and write your own examples and uh, pause the video at acceptable times to try and guess what these documents are going to be. But basically we're looking at two things, two requirements of the document-based question. Analyzing point of view in at least one document and uh, identifying an additional document that would help uh, help your thesis. Um, so let's go ahead and, and get looking at this. A uh, quick reminder, analysis of point of view uh, is not just where the writer is coming from. So not just whether they were uh, a king or a peasant or a general Excuse me, and not whether or not uh, whether they were from Spain or not. That's that's not going to be enough. What we need to do is think about what their opinion is, and what informs his or her opinion. And then, uh, how does that? How might where they're coming from uh, alter their opinion? For example, also we want to think: is there bias, uh, and why is there bias? Not just saying yes, this person is biased, or no, they're not because they're from Spain, or they're not from Spain. But why uh, does this bias exist? Um, and maybe even how might it affect uh, their, their, uh, how they address their audience. Uh, is this perspective trustworthy? Why or why not? Um, a couple other things to think about. Um, you know, who are they speaking to? What kind of tone do they take in, in their writing? Uh, is it uh, a, a point of view of um, being very urgent to make change? Or is it a point of view uh, that um, might be uh, directed at the masses, or is it directed at a king? Is it a private communication? Is it uh, a public uh, decree? All these things can help us understand uh, why a person holds a certain opinion, or why they say what they say in these documents. Uh, and that's how we're going to analyze this point of view. So let's look at a quick prompt here. Uh, this is not the one that you had yesterday. Using the following documents, analyze the similarities and differences in the mechanization of the cotton industry in Japan and India in the period from the 1880s to the 1930s. And then identify an additional document. We're going to be talking about point of view in this PowerPoint. Um, so as you see these examples, think to yourself, pause the video if need be, uh, and think, does it accurately analyze point of view? All right, so let's get started. Again, mechanization of the cotton industry in Japan and India. So here is one. It is important to note, however, that the author of the document of document four is a Buddhist monk. Therefore, it is possible that his beliefs and outlook, as shaped by the Buddhist religion, may have been may have biased his, sta his statement. So we have to think: Is this a uh, a good enough analysis of point of view? And no, it is not. So why isn't it? Well, mainly, they say, yes, he's a Buddhist monk. He might be biased. Uh, his Buddhist religion may have shaped that bias. But there's no explanation of how this might be, or how his opinion uh, or point of view came to take shape by this Buddhist religion. So it really kind of stops short of full analysis. Let's look at another. The source, document three, can be exaggerated. However, due to a bias... Uh, due to bias, considering that the source came from two women who used to work in the factories and were trying to put pity on themselves. Now, the fact that this sentence can be cleaned up, notwithstanding, uh, this is an acceptable point of view because it talks about the bias uh, and what created that bias. The idea that these two women used to work in factories and uh, they may have been, their point of view might have been, oh, woe is me, this, how, you know, pitiful I am having to work in these horrible conditions. Uh, and so therefore they might exaggerate those conditions to make their point heard. Let's look at another. However, this document, document three, may not be accurate because it is two working class women recalling events from years ago and may have forgotten or embellished some facts to inspire sympathy. So think to yourself, is this adequate or inadequate? 
And the answer is yes. It's very similar to the last statement in that it uh, provides an analysis of their point of view. They're recalling events from the uh, factory. Of course, it was years ago. So whenever you do something much later, it can uh, damage the accuracy of the report. And uh, it also kind of brings in this idea of embellishing some facts or, as we said in the previous one, um, exaggerating to inspire sympathy or pity on them. Let's look at another. Even though India is working to produce more cotton for England, this report, Document 9, shows little or no interest in caring, although it talks about the low wages of workers. This is not going to be uh, acceptable. And the reason being is it basically summarizes the document. It says what it, the document says. It basically says it talks about the low wage of workers. It doesn't really show much interest in caring. But why doesn't it show much interest in caring? Who wrote this document? What is this document? Um, uh, how is this document influenced by the person writing it that they don't care? There's no further uh, steps being taken here. To, to analyze the point of view. All right, last one. This document can be trusted. So back to document three, we know this about uh, women in the factory. This document can be trusted to provide an accurate description of what was occurring in Japan during this time, as it comes from the perspective of two girls who have worked in the factory. This is going to be adequate. And I would say this barely kind of meets the, the uh, requirements. But... Uh, it's saying that you can trust the document and why you can trust the document. So it gives the background of the female workers in the factory. So this would be acceptable. So that's it for this video on point of view. Your next activity is to write uh, your own point of view analysis for one of the documents uh, from your DBQ. And keep in mind that uh, you can do more than one if you choose. You can do a couple if you'd like me to look those over, but you're only required to do one. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.